This is your host, Nick Riley, and you're listening to the One Day Advice Podcast. Together, we're going to take a ride inside the world of personal finance. I'm going to give you a fully transparent, behind-the-scenes look into the financial services industry, helping you to optimize your financial life along the way. So I'm sitting here today with Jedediah Collins. Uh, He's a good friend of mine and a fellow Washington State uh, alumni. Go Cougs. Uh, Yeah, go Cougs. Uh, He had a little bit better football career than I did, uh, personally. I'll let let him tell you about it a little further. But Jed, yeah, thanks for, for being on the show today. Would you mind giving the listeners a little overview of all the... I knew you have a lot going on. Uh, in the world of, of financial literacy and, and personal finance, give the listeners a little journey into uh, what Jed has done with his life up to this point. Nick, let me begin by making it very clear. As far as I got in my football career, I would say you were the inspiration. I just learned a tremendous amount from you know your work ethic and just really your skill set on the football field. So uh, don't don't discredit yourself there. You have inspired many many young football players. Uh, so yes, my my name's Jedediah Collins. Um, what is what is awesome is I got to go from you know being in high school to being a student athlete at Washington State, getting a great degree in business. I'm focused in accounting, and then that dream that opportunity came across where I got to go and chase that NFL dream. Um, and what was really neat was I, I kind of got to get exposed and find tremendous value in in two sides of that coin. The the first being my journey did not go as planned. I got went undrafted, which means all thirty two teams kind of told me no, and then I got cut twelve times throughout my career, and I got to play seven seasons. That experience of getting cut 12 times taught me perseverance, taught me grit, taught me a a lot about being a self-starter on my way to becoming the number one ranked fullback in the game of football in the NFL, making me the best in the world at something. So that that to me as an entrepreneur today is everything. Getting cut 12 times, becoming the best, that is a a verbatim the experience of an entrepreneur on a day-to-day basis. Um, But the other thing the NFL really exposed me to was how unprepared I was for the the financial dream and opportunity before me. Uh, My first paychecks came in, and I am proud and ashamed to say I spent them the day they came. And that was really the only relationship I had or understood about money. And I remember very vividly waking up a day or two after that first paycheck. Now, I will give you full disclosure. I bought an engagement ring. It's a very cute story. (laughs) And I will tell my wife to this day, that was a very, very poor financial decision. Um, Not Great life decision, though. (laughs) Great life decision. Not because of the investment. She and I are happily married after 10 plus years. But because a week after I bought this beautiful ring and made that great decision, what if I needed to pay rent? What if I got cut and I didn't have savings or I didn't have my plan in place? I didn't have, that's why it was a poor financial decision. And it really woke me up to this truth that I was financially illiterate. I turned to my brothers. One was getting a a master's in engineering at Berkeley. The other getting his Harvard law degree. And I asked them, hey, you guys are the upper echelon of higher education. Obviously the big dumb jock brother didn't go to the money class. What am I supposed to be doing here? And they came with more questions than answers, honestly. I turned to my father who had run a law firm, his own law firm for 30 plus years. And I will tell him to his face today, still financially illiterate, but he's retired. He's fine. But nobody in my family had had answers. And so I went out and started to to look for them in the gurus. Go to, you know, a a bookstore and pick up the the names we all know and have grown to love. and, And it really started to scratch the interest in this world. Um, until a mentor of mine challenged me to get my CFP, that Certification of Financial Planning. And each off-season in the NFL, that is what I would do. I would study for and prepare for um, another exam and prerequisite in the CFP process. And so as I left football, seven years, tremendous career, way longer than anybody ever expected, um, I started to see the the road I wanted to go down was financially based. I wanted to go into this this avenue, 
But at the time, there really wasn't a, an industry or an opportunity to say, Jed wants to go become a financial educator. I want to go help groups and people start their careers. There was really just this avenue of being a an advisor. And I think that's a tremendous job. I think it's a tremendous career and you impact a lot of people. Um, but my focus and my passion was a little bit younger, a little bit on the other side of the spectrum. And so as I was working in an RIA for five years, I continued to develop content, create workshops, and I would go out to high schools, colleges, nonprofits, companies, and really anyone who would sit down and listen, I would deliver these financial wellness workshops to the point I, I started to see this was my passion. This is what I wanted to do. This is what I love to do. Um, and it challenged me that question of, Am, am I afraid of failing or am, am I afraid of regretting never have tried? And that is when I took the leap to to make money vehicle, my full-time gig, my, my full responsibility and passion. And for the last two, a year and a half or so, we have been empowering people through one of the first online on-demand virtual financial literacy certification courses. Um, and that's really what we're guiding towards is how do we tell young professionals or students that they are on the right track in regards to their money? And that's become our mission is empowering them to do so. Yeah, no, I, I love that story and just the initiative that you had uh, while being in the NFL to start studying uh, towards the CFP and all of that. Uh, it just it it boggles my mind that that the NFL does not have a financial literacy or i mean you the the you look at uh you know number one pick this year having a 22 million dollar signing bonus and and you know, partnering up with a, a blockchain related company yeah and and locking it into into bitcoin and i'm sure he's getting sponsored and paid around that but that that is a lot of money uh to just all of a sudden have overnight it is so the NFL is doing a much better job than they were 10 years ago. They are they notice the problem, they see the statistics and they are trying to address it. I myself get to work with the NFL league as well as individual yeah. teams quite a lot now trying to remedy this problem. Um but in the essence that it is so difficult to challenge a 21 22 year old to say these next three to five years are meant for the next 30 to 50 years of your life. That is a really tough concept to get across. Yeah. Um, and you line up any 100, 22-year-olds and give them a million dollars, very few of them are going to use it wisely. Um, and I look at the Trevor Lawrence decision, and there's been a, a player or two who is saying, I want all my base salary in Bitcoin. Pay me in mm -hmm. crypto. Uh, I get to talk to NFL players, and this is such a hot topic because – they are evolving into wanting to be more of the investor mindset, wanting to go and see these returns. And as you've mm -hmm. seen, uh, pretty much everything in the crypto space just give exponential returns over the last year. It's hard to look at that and say, well, I don't want to be a part of that. And you do want to be a part of that. But to, to put such a big piece of your world into that kind of investment at this time, I try to, sh to, to express to them, it's like juggling, you know, sticks of fire. And yeah. you see this person juggling, juggling. Being an NFL player is one of the riskiest jobs in America. You are Absolutely. guaranteed yeah. nothing beyond this Sunday. What's the and average tenure in the NFL? Isn't it like less three. than, yeah, yeah, three years. Wow. Three. And, and you, you, this is the law of large numbers here. To qualify for your retirement and benefits, you got to get over three years. So half of you won't make it and half of you will get the benefits that the NFL has to offer. Um, but to look at juggling those fire sticks of the NFL and throwing one more and saying, now your currency, now what's in your wallet is also the most risky. That is where I really struggle in the identification of these risk takers as mm -hmm. athletes they need to, uh, and one of my adages that I'm promoting right now is the only aspect of your life, I'm going to tell you this advice, be average. When your investments, while you're playing, all you need to do is be average. Use indexes. You're not going to create or generate wealth while you're playing outside of your career. That's the wealth creator. Um, yeah. 
So it is a very interesting time. But that discussion of professional athletes being this next frontier of wealth is very much underway. And as you see a few of them start to cross that billionaire platform, there's just going to be more and more to come. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I think Russell Wilson's a great example too, you know, being in the Seattle area like we both are. Uh, he's got his hands in so many different businesses. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you look at True Fusion and some other ones around around just the Seattle area, but also nationally. I mean, he's getting involved in a lot of other, and that's where I see or envision a lot of the NFL players being able to use a lot of their influence in a positive way to build businesses uh, around their 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 brand, essentially. And you know, there's a there's a good window in order to do that. Uh, not everyone has the, the the long window that a Tom Brady has in the league. <laughs> not yeah. at all. And that's what is so neat. And you, you look at the professional athlete and then you look at these NILs for the, the student athlete, the college athlete coming, and you see overnight, it's going to just keep trickling down to, to 12-year-olds and high schoolers to where you have to become a business and you have to become empowered around how to handle these decisions around finances and money immediately because mm-hmm. your paychecks are starting to roll in. Um, and yeah, seeing the opportunities they have to be leaders is really going to be neat. And it's going to be even cooler as more of them develop a pillar where they say financial literacy is what I want to promote. And yeah. I, I foresee times and have already engaged in some partnerships where um, you, let's click open the first video of the money vehicle course. And it ain't it's not me. It's a cool, new, young Trevor Lawrence type figure telling you that this is such an important subject and topic. And it just gets that interest level a bit, a bit higher. Yeah, definitely. And I loved what you did in in promoting your money vehicle too early on of of getting other NFL players to mm. uh, teach various lessons uh, in your course. And, you know, I, I love seeing the Gardner Minshew one, obviously, uh-huh. uh, being another Coug. And he was he was pretty hot at the time. Uh, it'll it'll be I'll be curious to see where he stands now with Trevor Lawrence in the picture in Jacksonville. But uh, so on the financial literacy note, too, your money vehicle. Let's, let's talk a little bit more about how you've structured that, and you know, built kind of the the main foundations around personal finance. So you you mentioned kind of starting off and uh, you know just digging into some of the foundations around personal finance. How have you structured that? I know there's a lot of different ways in, uh, you can go about structuring a financial literacy course. Uh, kind of walk me through your mentality around that. So I was out delivering hundreds of of wellness workshops. And really, I just started to accumulate a series of frequently asked questions. And I challenged myself and as well as some of the people I was building it with and said, if we were going to start from scratch, what would the first 10 questions be on a financial journey? And that's where the curriculum started to take life is Let's let's have a holistic viewpoint of money and address the first 10 topics and questions people continue to ask us in these sessions. And when we do that, it's a really neat lens because so much is driven by investments. And I love investing. Investing is important, but it's not everything. In, in fact, you control very little about your investments compared to other aspects of money. Um, and so as we looked at it, we said, Okay, what would be a holistic course where if they took these 10 actions, they would have taken a, their first step in 10 different categories of the world of finances. And that's really where the money vehicle curriculum uh, founded was ask the questions, answer them through stories and analogies. We can't just pop on screen and define things. We have to translate this foreign language of money And then landing with very specific takeaways. What is the overarching theme of this chapter? And more importantly, why we're not just an education company, but an empowerment course is here is the action you need to go take. Here is what you need to go do based on the knowledge you just gained and gathered. Um, And so even a, a part of our certification process is that you need to provide proof that you have taken action based on the, the talks and the tips that we've provided throughout the, the, the content. Um, and so it's been a really neat ongoing development. What's the beautiful thing about a virtual course compared to a book 
is we're changing it. We're updating it. We're giving different, we're adding new uh, contributors. We're, you know, meeting new standards based on adding little uh, videos here and there. Um, And so it continues to evolve. And we get to proudly say we are one of the best financial literacy courses in the country today. And in the next year or two, I think we'll proudly be able to say we're the best. No mm-hmm. doubt. Yeah. No, I, I love what you're building too. And and you're just such an inspiring individual too. So to to pair that with the empowerment aspect of being able to empower these the, the people reading your book, uh, taking the course, uh, I, I really I look forward to the next few years to see where that 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 is able to be built to. Uh, the so talking about the foundations of financial literacy, I, one of the th- big things that I address with clients early on is is just an overall awareness of money coming in and money coming out. Oh, yeah. uh, so really understanding the cash flow dynamic because I look at cash flow as kind of the lifeblood of your entire personal finance ecosystem per se. So uh, in the course uh, around building awareness and, and education, what are what are some tips that you have for not only the listeners but uh, for for people to get them interested in in going through the course? What what is your philosophy around cash flow management? Essential, um, and that's so. I get to sit down again with a, a very similar to you with a prospective client, a room full of NFL players, and everybody has this dream in their head. Trevor Lawrence, yes, check the box. He made it. He he should be fine. No money is the amount of money you can't overspend. But everybody has this dream of like, I'm going to go play in the NFL. My life is going to be totally set up. And my first question to them is, well, how much money do you think you spend in a year? Most have, you know, blank stares as you ask any 20 or 30 year old, how much money you spend in a year? And very few are going to be able to give you a ballpark number. Um, and then we break it down to a month. But then I really start to frame around why that number is so important and what freedom, what wealth really means. Being rich is having a giant income. Being wealthy is how many years do you not have to worry about money? And there is a significant difference in those two lenses. Um, and so as I talk to people, and some of these people are you know, high level Amazonians or sales tech salespeople here in Seattle, my neighbors, that first question of, do you, can you ballpark how much you spend in a year? Okay. Let's say it's for round numbers, a hundred thousand. Awesome. Well, easy is to say a hundred thousand times 20 is 2 million. That's how much you would need to be 20 years of wealth. That is what that protects. That burn rate, what you spend on an annual basis Now you have a portfolio that can provide that. And not only can that one number show me what, how much wealth you have, how many years of protection, but it can also start to share with me as a, as somebody who is helping you, how, how you should be invested, how much risk you can take on. Again, as we were talking about blockchain or cryptocurrencies and the risk factor, You really look at an NFL player and say, you need years protected before you can take on these long term style of risk plays. And that is, you know, no different than passing the conditioning test when you show up for training camp. You have to pass this cash flow exam and this cash flow test of how many years are you comfortable. So, what we do in the course is we walk through. Not only a, an introduction into habits and an introduction into really opportunity costs, but we really want you to see what we use the money bucket system. And it's the five choices you have with every dollar you make. And again, this is the high level perspective of as a paycheck comes in, now I can categorize it. Now I can employ it. And that's a saying we love to, to repeat is employ your money. That paycheck comes in. If it's five hundred or five thousand dollars, I know exactly where, and I'm telling where each dollar is supposed to and intended to yeah. go. So, no different than you. I think the lifeblood of of cash management is one of the most overlooked aspects of personal finances. But it's because we need to empower people with tools and with the concepts of where and how it goes. And to really show them that they are in control, 
not that a, a budget or some list or some number is controlling them. Yeah, definitely. I, I love that whole bucket approach too. And and you know, one thing you know, tying it back to the NFL, you watching ballers or whatever. Uh, you know, a lot of these NFL players they had this this you know, group around them uh, that that they helped rise to the top with them, and they feel inclined to to give back. And mm-hmm. the amount of people that are all of a sudden asking for money, like they get by with rent, or like, hey, I haven't, you know, I've, I'm driving a 20 year old car, I can't continue to do that. So they're they're asking the NFL players for money. And the same thing happens in you know our lives. We we have holes in our buckets, whether they're ongoing subscriptions that are uh, just taking away some of our income each month. Uh, everyone has holes in their buckets that, that they can assess and and fill up. And I think it's uh, awareness is really the the key in a lot of your cash flow planning because if you aren't aware of what's coming in and coming out, there's no way that you can gain control mm. over building up a positive savings rate, which leads to uh, you know having an emergency fund. And you talked about wealth versus being rich, and I look at wealth too as as our most valuable resource is time. And when you are wealthy, uh, you have money in the bank and assets that can protect you. And that gives you the, the flexibility and the ability to take time off from work, to be with family. Uh, you're not having to, to check in and out to a nine to five job every day. Uh, you've built an emergency fund. So if something happens to your family, you can drop what you're doing and not be uh, taking a huge hit financially. So I love that topic. I know uh, there's a lot of other things that we can we can talk about too. Did you have anything else to add? Uh, no, I I think you know as it, I think you covered it perfectly. Now yeah, this is this we we agree so much in in that notion, and I I really think if we can just challenge people to to write that number down, you know, you start with these simple numbers. Number one is what's going out. Number two is how much do you ultimately want. And then number three is how we're going to get there. And that's an introduction to time value of money and investing in compound interest. But I really love to, to focus with that cash cash flow first, but then to, to define your dream. What is your goal? The most important part of a plan is the destination. And so to be able to define those two numbers is, is this is how much I spend and this is ultimately how much I want to support my freedom and my life. Mm-hmm. With those two numbers, people begin to immediately develop a plan. And, you know, how you build out a strategy is by talking to more educated people like yourself or myself. But those two numbers can change your whole world. And it's yeah. very simple. Yeah, definitely. And and I I know sometimes we we always kind of begin with the destination in mind. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people these days too, and myself included, we want to enjoy the journey. Uh, mm-hmm. along the way as well. So being being present and being able to, and that's where control over your money or just the full awareness allows you to say, I can afford to go on vacation today. I can go this weekend and have a fun trip. It's not going to set me back because I'm still on track towards my goals. So I would lo- we'll love to have you on the podcast again and to go into other areas of your money vehicle. Uh, but to kind of wrap things up, how can listeners uh, get a hold of your money vehicle and, and start to follow you? Yourmoneyvehicle.com. That will give you an introduction into the course as well as, you know, you can buy the book on Amazon. But truly in today's element, I would encourage people to go through that virtual course. 10 minutes a day, you get a five to seven minute video, you get exercises, planning actions, you really personalize it. Um, That's at yourmoneyvehicle.com. You can follow me on social media at Fullback of Finance. And then I love LinkedIn, Jedediah Collins. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. Give me comments. Give me feedbacks, questions. Uh, We are out to empower and open a million Roth accounts. We want to help people take advantage and control their financial future. So if that is your mission and you're wondering where do you start, this is an excellent resource and course to really get you off and headed in the right direction. Perfect. And and is this course really meant for a specific type of person or uh, can anyone uh, go through it? I would say anyone can go through it. We've had plenty of 30s, 40-year-olds go through it and say that they have learned from it. 
We've had parents with their children go through it and say it's been a tremendous conversation starter. Um, We are targeting a younger demographic, 18 to 25, truly the first, truly people starting out in their plan. Now, that is to say, if I'm 28 and I'm saying I don't know where to start, this is where you start. So I, I don't love the age demographic. I'm more focused on if you want to know, if you don't know what a Roth account is, if you don't know how your insurance policy works, how taxes are, are order organized, or s- simply, you know, how investments starts out, like what are the, the fundamentals and the basics and how to introduce into an index fund, this is that course for you. We're going to entertain you. We're going to tell you stories, but you're going to walk away with a lot of knowledge and uh, action items to take. Love it. And I love all the analogies and metaphors that you give to <laughs> in your lesson. So that's something I can really appreciate. Everyone loves a good story. Uh, and your story is definitely, uh, you know, high up there with with other financial gurus. I love your story and love your background. It's always a privilege to be able to talk with you. I look forward to having you on other podcasts, of course, as well. Uh, but yeah, for now, yeah, thanks for thanks for taking the time to, to be here today. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to share the Money Vehicle Movement and uh, keep doing what you're doing one day, brother, one day at a time. (laughs) Will do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nick Riley, the founder of One Day Advice. If you like what you've heard, we'd greatly appreciate your help in spreading the word. After all, we are financial educators, not marketers. Thanks for listening and remember to leave us a review. Nick Riley is the founder of One Day Advice, an independent fiduciary and fee-only registered investment advisor. Nick serves as a wealth advisor and educator to his clients. All opinions expressed by Nick and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of One Day Advice. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment or financial decisions.